please join me in welcoming Joseph Sirach. Hi. Thank you very much. So, in the remote mountains of the Himalayas, in an area 10 times the size of New York State, there lives a creature so rarely seen that it's called the ghost of the mountain. It's a snow leopard, one of nature's most magnificent creatures. It is the apex predator of the Himalayas. Its prey is mountain goats and blue sheep. And it plays an incredible role in balancing that ecosystem. But the snow leopard is endangered. There are only a few thousand of them left in the wild. Mining destroys entire mountains and their habitat. They're killed for their precious hide and bones for Asian medicine. And the poor farmers and villagers who live there, when one of their livestock is attacked by a snow leopard, they take revenge. So why should we care? Snow leopards and predators like this at the top of the pyramid are critical to the balance of nature. How many of you have heard of how the wolf saved the Yellowstone National Park? When the wolves were reintroduced in 1995, it set off what ecologists call a trophic cascade. Well, the wolf controlled the deer population. Then the deer stopped overgrazing, and the plants started regrowing back. And when the plants started regrowing back, there were more bugs and there were more berries. And then more birds came in. And then uh, beavers returned. And they created dams in the rivers. And then more otters came. And then there were more mice. And then there were more, even more bears. And then when the rivers had plants on their riverbanks, the riverbanks stabilized. And the river started flowing narrower and better. The wolf even changed the geography of the entire park. And in a period of 20 years, the park became lush and green and teeming with life. That's what an apex predator does. So the question is, can we save a protector of the Himalayan ecosystem? After all, a billion people live in the watershed of the Himalayas. And the health of that ecosystem is critical to their well-being as well. So the Snow Leopard Trust is a passionate group, a small group of volunteers in Seattle dedicated solely to this cause. It was founded by Helen Freeman in 1981. And their primary method of conservation is community-based conservation. They work with the villagers in these remote regions of the Himalayas and partner with them to prevent poaching and retribution killing. So, but to save snow leopards, we must find them. How do we help a species of which we know so little? We don't know what their real habitats are. In fact, they weren't really seen by scientists until two decades ago. They're very hard to spot, and they range as a small few thousand of them range over a very large area. So let's play a game, an I spy game. I spy a snow leopard in this image. Do you? So that's where it is. It is one of the most camouflaged, well camouflaged animals in its natural habitat. So there are two ways of tracking snow leopards now. GPS collars and camera traps. The most effective way, of course, is GPS collars. This is what a GPS collar looks like. Now, if you can call it a snow leopard, it gives you invaluable data. The data is sent to a satellite, and it comes down directly to the research lab, and then you can apply sophisticated data science to it 
like maximum likelihood estimation and others to study its behavior, even with a few data samples. And you can actually see the tracks of snow leopards. These are live tracks of snow leopards in the remote mountains of Mongolia. Well, but it took nine years to call it 23. And obviously this is not scalable. To study populations of snow leopards over such a wide area, you need a more scalable technology. Enter camera traps. Digital camera traps, very robust cameras that can take thousands of images when triggered by motion or infrared sensors and as an animal goes by. So this is what it looks like. Some of the images captured automatically by uh, the snow leopard cameras in these remote mountains. Now, these cameras take thousands of pictures. And the Snow Leopard Trust has about 300 plus cameras distributed all over the region, but only five staff. And they are looking to analyze hundreds of thousands, even millions of images, a lot of which are false positives. Even a blade of grass moving in front of a camera or an ibex or even a camel deciding to squat in front of the camera will trigger it off. And here is a passionate ecologist who's been doing this hard work, Dr. Kaustab Sharma. He, his work is often climbing the dangerous ridges of Himalayas at 5,000 to 10,000 feet and more to reach camera traps and get images and then bring it back to the lab and classify them and then apply data science to it to estimate these populations. And one of his most tiresome tasks is coming back to the lab and having to manually classify these vast number of images. It takes 300 hours per survey, you know, 10 to 15 surveys per year, 5% contain snow leopards, and at the rate at which he can do these things, it will take decades to really understand the population. And the snow leopard may not have decades. So can AI help? Can we build perhaps a heat map, heat map of the snow leopard population using AI? Well, enter deep neural networks. We took a large number of the snow leopard images and non-snow leopard images and built deep neural networks for sorting and classifying them into a snow leopard image or not a snow leopard image. This is an example of the architecture. We used what's called a ResNet 50, trained on a vast collection of public data called ImageNet data. We used that as a featureizer for the images and then built a custom machine learning model on top of that to classify images into images with a snow leopard or without. And then we built on Azure a snow leopard classifier as a service. And I'm sure this is the first time you've heard of the snow leopard classifier as a service. Well, so. What happens then is Kaustab from his lab in Kyrgyzstan, in Bishkek, he can upload a set of images to a service in the cloud, and then, then it sorts it and saves him enormous amounts of time. The first step in applying AI. So let's actually hear from Kaustab himself, and he would have joined us if we could have done Skype, but he's halfway across the world, and I have a recorded video. Hi, I'm Kostov, and I work with the Snow Leopard Trust as an ecologist. Going through thousands of camera trap images is a tedious and probably more exhausting task than hiking mountains. This is where artificial intelligence comes to the rescue. It can save us from the manual labor of sifting through hundreds of thousands of images. All I now need to do is upload photos to Azure. This is like magic. This data is worth its weight in gold. So the next step, that's just the first step in a journey. Our next step is then to go from detection to identification, meaning identify individual snow leopards across hundreds of thousands of images and identify individuals so you can track them. Now, by the way, that is a task that is a lot harder than face identification and classifying human faces, which we've made a lot of progress at. And if, by the way, any of you want to help in this very charitable cause of doing the research 
to identify unique snow leopards, please let me know. It is a very honorable cause to do. So let's take a look at how far conservation efforts have been empowered with technology. When Helen Freeman started the Snow Leopard Trust way back in 1981, their most advanced technology was tracking snow leopards, looking at their footprints, and estimating from leopard scat how many individuals there were. And now they have GPS collars and digital cameras helping them, and it amplifies their efforts. And the future is empowering them even more with cloud and AI. Very powerful. Well, so, let's step back. Cloud and AI are very powerful, right? Yes, they can show up even in the most unexpected applications. And they can empower the noblest of human causes. But often, when we talk about AI, we're so focused on selling ourselves and the rest of the world on the tools, on the algorithms, and the technology, and the possibilities. But it's more than AI. It's more than algorithms. It's the idea that triggered it. It is a conservationist who's asking, why can't there be a better way? It's a technologist who puts that together with the most advanced technology and solves the problem. And then it is the internet and the cloud and data that all make it, and machine learning, that all make it real and usable. And when all of these come together, AI can make the world a far better place. But it all starts with a question. It starts with an idea and a passionate human being. Thank you.